You might not see an opening of a car review to be about floating on water every day, unless there's been an accident. But that's exactly what we are doing in this video. This is the BYD Yangwang U8, a Chinese electric off-roader. Despite weighing nearly 3.5 tons, it can effortlessly float and even sail on water like you drive it on the land. And I think it's clearly more useful than a hover van in top gear. Obviously, it is not an amphibious car. BYD's official told us that day, floating on water is just a safety feature for emergencies. But during that test pilot, we floated for about 10 minutes, it actually felt quite reassuring. Some might think this is not very practical for everyday use, but let's not forget, the Yangwang U8 comes with a hefty price of 1.1 million yuan, which is around 154 grand, which means it's a proper luxury car. Beyond premium features like comfort, materials, and performance, luxury is all about offering something unique that other cars can't. Like the comfort of a Merc, the performance of a Porsche, or the ability to drive into water and back to land of this one. So today, we are going to find out what makes this Chinese luxury off-roader, even the governor of California would want two of them, truly luxurious. I'm Harris, you're watching my EV. While this may not be something we get to use in a hundred years, the fact that it can pull this off shows the impressive performance in other aspects. To make something float on water, the first step is to have an airtight ceiling. For a car, keeping the water out also means it can keep the noise out. Normally, a boxy ladder frame off-road vehicle will struggle at some proving, but the Yangwang U8 is truly on another level. Without exaggeration, its NVH can even rival that of luxury sedans like the Mercedes S-Class. If you think my word is not convincing enough, listen to this clip. Such an incredible sale is not achieved using just three layers of rubber strips. The body rigidity and manufacturing precision also need to be extremely high. Once these are all checked, the safety, handling, the suppression of squeaking sound on rough roads can all be improved. Having addressed the floating thing, let's move on to the next one. How to make the car move in water. If the tires are off-road enough, we can indeed rely on the rotation of the wheels to prepare the car forward. However, steering by the front wheel is impractical. What we need is the ability to steer through power. To make the two wheels on one axle produce different power, the only solution is to give in the car four motors. When the sensors detect the car is about to get in the water, floating mode is automatically triggered, which involves shutting down the engine, activating the air recirculation, opening the sunroof, and raising the suspension. In this mode, the car will adjust the power output of each wheel based on moving speed, body attitude, water flow, and your steering input, thus making the car turn in water. Although it moves slowly, the control of direction is easy and stable. Without a doubt, having four motors is not just for swimming. The first perk is in power. Each motor can reach 220 kilowatts, totaling 880, enough to accelerate this 3.5-ton Hulk to 100 kph in just 3.6 seconds. With such power, traditional engine becomes obsolete, so the 272 horsepower engine serves only as range extender. This is also why this massive vehicle is equipped with only a 49 kilowatt hour battery. The second perk is in track distribution. Since the four motors are independent, the car can constantly match different power outputs to wheels with different traction. What's more, thanks to inter-angle differential locks, a single wheel can receive a maximum of 440 kilowatts of power. Comparing to this, you might think that the traditional three differential locks on a gasoline car are just too lame. The last one is the fancy maneuvers. Yes, it can do tank turn, but sadly, BYD seem to have limited speed, so it cannot spin that fast like the EQG and Rivian, which are more like dryers. Now that all four wheels are independently driven, you might be wondering, can the suspension move independently? That's exactly what it can do. For traditional luxury off-roaders, air suspension might seem a bit too delicate. Hydraulics are the way to go. However, the U8 DCS P system takes it to a whole new level. This is because it offers infinite damping adjustment, three-stage stiffness adjustment, a maximum travel adjustment of 200mm, and a maximum lifting force of 5 tons. 
which means this system is even more capable than the air suspension on the Land Rover Defender. The result is that with off-roading, I feel pretty confident about almost every obstacle. On the highway, the road isolation is excellent, providing a comfortable ride. Facing winding mountain roads, it remains stable, balanced, or even agile, avoiding any discomfort or dizziness for the passengers. And more importantly, this kind of performance makes the car more forgivable. Even amateurs can enjoy a thrilling yet comfortable off-road experience. As for the specific principle of this system, please stay tuned for our next video. After seeing this, you might expect it to have four-wheel steering. Sadly, unlike the crazy Hammer EV, it does not. But then again, more electronics means it's more likely to run into issues and it's more difficult and expensive to get fixed. Moreover, the precise control of the motors is already sufficient to cover most scenarios where you would need four-wheel steering. Perhaps the only thing it cannot achieve is this. However, do we really need this cramp work feature? Let me say that again. Luxury cars are supposed to offer something that others can't. The U8 clearly accomplished that on mobility. But what about the interior? In short, the interior of this U8 doesn't quite match its million yuan price tag. What compromises the overall design is its resemblance to Bentley. Yes, BYD gave it a touch of modern technology like these screens, but that doesn't help. So the entire design just looks like it was from a decade ago. The problem is that BYD might have assumed that their target customers are old monies who love cars like Bentley. So they just went to copy the design. But the result feels like a mishmash without a clear theme. While the materials used are of high quality, such as full green leather and sapili wood, this alone doesn't guarantee a luxury interior. Well, it's important to note that BYD, a company accustomed to producing $20,000 affordable cars like this, is now entering a $150,000 market. Given their lack of experience in this segment, it's perhaps forgivable. For now. So at the end of the video, let me ask you a question. Can the UA be considered a luxury car? can really compete with Land Rovers, the G-Wagon, or Lexus LX. For me, in terms of product itself, it falls short, especially in the interior. But as for innovation and concept, it's leading the industry, achieving things that other cars can't. I think it shouldn't be compared to traditional luxury SUVs. It makes more sense to compare it to the Hammer EV, which more like a concept car taken straight out of designer's draft. Let's not forget, 10 years ago, BYD was making SUVs like the S6, but now it's making this. They've evolved quite fast, I would say. So let's wait and see what they can really become in the next decade.